Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome everybody. Right, well, as the title, title says, I can't believe these things are just, so these, these, these things, these, selling as fast as I can make them, they really are. I mean, I, I made a load of these, all sold out. I made a load more, all sold out. So tea light holders not selling quite as much at the moment, but then that's the oh, time it's staying light until mm. near 10 o'clock. So, well, it's getting darker now. Give it another couple of months, they'll be selling like mad. But anyway, these things, and what I'm finding is really the pine ones are fantastic. It's a pine, it's so cheap. I get these long lengths, and if I buy like, they sell, they're two meter lengths, three by three they are. Uh, no, 60 mil by 60 mil, sorry. Um, and he does them at a five or a length, but if I buy like 10 or 15 lengths, it'd do them cheap with like three quid a length or something. So it works out pretty good. So chop them up, and make these out of them, nice and cheap wood. If you're doing it out of things like uh, exotic woods, you know, a bit of Zabrano, how much a bit of Zabrano, how much that gonna cost you? Mm. Yeah, you just don't get your money back on, on items, you really won't. And these are so cheap. And to be honest, the young girl walking down past your stall, you know, with a couple of kiddies in the buggy, looking to get a nice little uh, vase to stick some lavender in the bathroom. She don't really know whether it's Coca Cola, Purple Art, Zabrano, she ain't gonna have a bloody clue. She really isn't. So, you know, like I said, if you're trying to sell it to wood turners, might be a different matter. Don't try and sell it to wood turners. <laughs> Simple as that. Right, okay, I'm gonna turn this, so it's gonna be, a, but I'm gonna do it with the carbide, because again, I keep getting asked about Getting people getting problems with tear out with the carbide. I know I've done it, I've done a bug vase with it, but obviously they don't want to go back over old videos, so they've asked questions, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this with the carbide. Uh, roughing gouge at first, I always say if you've got a rough down piece, roughing gouge is the best tool. If you ain't got one, get one. If you ain't got a sharpening system, make one. I've shown how to do it, okay? No excuses. Right, that's what I'm going to do. Sorry if I'm talking a bit fast. I can't help it. It's just my way. <laughs> Speed is your thing, isn't it? I've been asked a bit about the shellac. My shellac. Uh, shine juice. Shine juice, whatever you want to call it. Okay, sand and sealer one. I was asked because I spoke through the measurements a bit quick and I think people got yeah. a little bit lost R in it. Rory Worthen. Yeah, was see, asking the trouble is with you guys in America. See, See, I talk proper English. He talks proper. And you, it's, it's like I have trouble understanding some of you American guys because you know we speak proper over here. You know. He says he speaks really slow. Yeah. So if you can go so slow. We 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 do our best on that. <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. Right. Anyway, let's get on. Right, I'm so going to rough this down. Lisa's going to so say I've a got few a thank yous. Couple of thank yous. Yeah. So. First of all, to Ian and Jill Collinson. Oh yes, Ian came over. He had a, a day with me. So yeah, that was quite good. Hopefully yep. we sorted out a few bits. I know from the picture of all your shavings, <laughs> I think we sorted out a few bits for you. <laughs> I hope you had so a good day. That was good. For both of you. And yes. Rory Worthen actually sent us some coffees as well. So Yeah, so thank you very much. Yet. Yes, Ian and Jill sent us 13 coffees. 13 so coffees, that was really yeah. good. And out of that, <laughs> I got myself a uh, a life centre. Got these off of Temu. This comes with all... Um, All these different heads you get with it okay that's a little knockout bar and then you get all the different heads there i'll show through that on another time where i'll go through it all very pleased with it yeah i have tried it it works really well okay uh nice and free how long will it last i don't know i don't really care um right i bought another life center this one quite like this one because that bit revolves and not this bit so that's that's quite quite nice yeah so I got that as well out of it, and then for some reason, I don't <laughs> bloody know why, I bought myself a parting tour for there from Timo. <laughs> I just like the look of it, to be honest. But I must say, it comes with a handle that's like that long. It's 20 quid. Um, I don't know why you'd want a handle sort of that long on a parting tour, I really don't. But I just took it into my metal shop, cut it down, um, done it all on the lathe, and, and retaped it, put the brass thread in, and that's it. That screws off, so... There you go, and screws back in. That's it, and that's made a nice little pine tool. It's quite a good steel, actually. It's a very good steel. Sharpened up very easily, and it works a treat. So, there you go. It's sit up there, a bit of more wall art. <laughs> yeah, wall art. And, uh, 
Yeah, I'll use it. Maybe won't use it. Who cares? What does it matter? It's, it's another yours, tool, isn't it? it? It's yeah. mine. It belongs to me. You bought it. Yeah, it's a belonger tool. It belongs to me. There you go. <laughs> right, let's get on. Rough it down. Let's do this. Too much bloody talking. <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to start up. Got to rough it down with roughing go first, okay? Near yeah, there's that knot there. Right, that's round. So I'm going to use the square carbide just to put a bit here so it goes in my cup. I said before, I like to put a rather longish tenon on that so it goes in because I'm going to be drilling. That's that, so let's get that put into the chuck. Yeah, we've got that knot there, so that should give a nice little feature. Mm -hmm. Alright, close that down. Yeah, so I'll put, because I've got these jaws, these sharp jaws, I'll put quite a long look it's that long a tenon on it why not I don't want that bit so if I wanted a shorter one I'd make it shorter but if I put that in there a little tight like that that gives me a really really good hole okay I will still bring the life center up for the moment because it helps to just reduce any chance of vibration or chatter that's all and then like I said I'm going to use the carbide with this so I'm going to bring my torus down a little bit because obviously carbide is a different height and I'm going to use the round. Now I know I say as you, if you want you can just push in but be careful if you are pushing in flat because especially with something like pine the tear out you put in now will you will have to go quite deep to get rid of. If you don't leave yourself enough cuts you could be in trouble okay so for my thing I would I would suggest more don't do it. Roll it over and come in. Right, I'm going to get this head done. Keep this one as a fairly biggish one here. Uh, wrong, I'm going to decide where I want the spot wrong. I'm going to come in about here for the next. Now, like I say, if you want to push in flat, like this, to get it, that's all right, but you're going to really tear that wood up. I'll just show you. Look, this is pine. And you've all seen it, you're going to get this, okay? Yeah. And what it actually does, it doesn't just tear it, it really rips fibres out and it leaves it quite deep. So, you know, you then you're going to struggle to get rid of it. So don't, if you can help it, don't do it. Just roll it over and come in this way. So all we've got to do is just roll it and just slice it in like this. And then we come this way. It's going to be quite a quite a longish one, really, a longish neck one. I've just decided. <laughs> Off the cuff. Off the cuff. Right, I'm going to just... I don't want that to be too... I don't want that to be too thin at the top. I find it looks better if it's a bit thicker like that. About there. Then come in, just rolled over, pick up that cut, come in. If you, if you get a line there, just go back for it. That's it. Just to there, nice and smooth. And then I want to bring this bit in. So, little bump just there. A little bit better. There, that went. 
Right, and then from here, I quite like this sharp edge shoulder rather than rolled over. I, I just, I don't know, for me I quite like it. So I'm going to come in here. Again, I'm just cutting in. I'm going to come in with a parting tool in a minute for that. Now as you can see, I'm not coming in flat. I'm, I've got my handle dropped, so I'm on the I'm on the bevel here, so there's no cut in. And then all I do is rotate my handle to pick up the cut. Okay, and that way I can get a nice a nice slice there. Right, so I want that nice sharp edge on that. Right, I feel a little bit of a bump there. So again, come in, rotate where I've got to start the cut. Just there. And I'm just going to round it on that bottom. Now, because I bought it, I might as well, <laughs> for a change, let's use a new parting tool. It, it's a real... It's, I'm not sure what it is. Um, hang on, let me tell you. I think that's two mil. Yeah, I think that's a two or three mil. Three might be three mil. About two, two point five mil probably says it on it actually. <laughs> no, it don't. It's two point five mil. Okay. So I've got two and a half mil, but it is really rigid. It's a, a really good steel. I highly recommend it. Right, I don't want to take any more than that, Dan, because I've got to drill it yet. Right, so I'm just going to roll this around a little bit. Like that. You see that? Yeah, we want to do it nice like that so we don't get that line on the bottom. There, that'll do, like that. That there, I've got a little bump there. I'm going to take deal with that in a minute. What I'm going to do is stop it, move this off, have a look. Now, look, that's the finish we want off the tool. Mm -hmm. Straight off the carbide tool, that's what we want. No tear out, okay? Yeah. Right, I'm going to quickly drill it. Cut this out. Should have got this already, but don't matter. Right, we'll get rid of that. We ain't going to need that no more. Pop me chuck in. There we go, and I'm going to use a 25 mil. I'm going to go for a 25 mil drill bit. These are the other ones. I've got. I, I bloody advertising for Timu here, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. These are these are fantastic. They work really well, actually. You know, you buy this stuff and you think, well, will it be any good? Well, you know. Yeah, it is actually. It's worked quite well. So right, bring that up. Lock that off not touching at the moment start up turn up oh it's just touching oh well, that's all right turn the low speed down we're going to go for about a thousand now just over a thousand rpm okay oh little bump there there we go we're in Remember to pull on your chuck as you're coming out, so you don't, um, well, I want to loosen it off and go in a bit more, that's it, there we go, and I'm going right down to the full depth of the drill bit, that's all. Right, and then as you wind it back out, I can feel there's quite a bit of pressure there as it's pulling all that sawdust out. So keep pulling backwards on your chuck because if you don't, what you'll do when you go like this, if you just pull it back, you'll pull the chuck out of here. And that is a not there. a good good position to be in. You pull your chuck out of there. Yeah, when the chuck comes out of your tail stock, mm. 
So sorry if that if you pulled out a bit of you. Yeah. Right, so when it's in there, when you pull back, pull back with your chuck like that. Even when you're winding back, pull back with the chuck all the time. Hold on to it. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, and it's look, a little I mean that's not ejecting, but a little twist and it comes out. If that pulls out like that, God help you. Well, he won't actually. No, he it's won't. All, you're on your own. <laughs> you really will be on your own. Right, okay. I'm going to come round here and just do a little something with this front edge. So, all I'm going to do, but be careful because I have gone down a bit thin there. Mainly because I forgot I was going to drill it. So all I'm doing here is using the side of the cut and just dropping the handle. Gives me a nice smooth finish. And here I'm just going, I really I want to go. It's alright, no, it's alright. I want to just come across here very gently. I'm a bit high actually. And I just want to come across. Clean this up. That's it, nice and clean, there we go. Just take that sharpness off of that edge, done, right, okay. We are all good. Let's bring this back round here. And I can feel a very, very slight bump there. Just there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come down here. gone there we go <laughs> and actually oh look i'm going to turn it a thousand rpm no oh, wonder get yeah. the speed up what nana <laughs> you silly nana right we're back up to two and a half thousand two thousand five hundred there we go that's why it was so slow <laughs> There, that's better. <laughs> right, now we've got a really nice smooth finish. So we've got to do some sanding, okay, because we need to sand anyway. And put that there. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to actually use my, uh, my drill for it because I want a really nice finish on this. Let me just get the uh, sanding discs here. I've got a 180. Yeah, it's I'm going to go through the grits because sorry, it's jumped up too much. 240 I want. Go to a 240 grit. I would quite often sand these with a hand sanding, but hang on. Oh. Oh, 320, yeah, 320. What a fight! You're putting that shellac over the top. 
it really will show up if there's any any lines. And I just like sounding with this anyway. Four hundred. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. And then we talk about the select the mixes. And I think this is a six, I'm not sure. Super smooth. Yep, that all feels really nice there. Yeah? Okay. Turn that off. Right, okay, let me stop that so I can have a look at it anyway. Yeah, we've got really nice fish. See, sanding with that, there, there won't be no sanding lines or anything. We've got really nice fish on that. Now, when I'm using this, mixing I did say sanding sealer right was a 1 to 10 mix that's for the sanding sealer only now shellac flakes because I've got the shellac flakes okay this isn't shellac flakes this is canoeble wax flakes but I ain't got no shellac wax flakes so I'm showing you these it will be like that okay all flakes yeah mm -hmm. um, I get the the waxed blonde on Find that I like the blonde flakes because the blonde tends to be a bit thicker <laughs> than other colours. <laughs> right. So anyway, the flakes. So put in now. Whether you want to do that by measurement, by uh, putting it in and seeing what the measurement is, how far it's up, or whether you want to do it by weight. If you do it by weight, one ounce of that to ten fluid ounces of denatured alcohol. Okay. Put it in. Just leave it to dilute. That will give you a thin enough mix like this. I find it works perfect as a sanding sealer that's for that that's it done with methylated spirits which is denatured alcohol which is hard to get the the white at some places okay works just exactly the same right for this sort of thing I can put this on quite and I, I want my sanding sealer I'm putting 30 finger marks on it hmm. I want my sand my um, shellac to go on pretty fast I don't want to have to slow the speed down all the time so for this one I use it's a 1-5 mix so one part shellac so if you done an ounce it would be five ounces of denatured alcohol for me I, I just do it by measurement now if you look here that there is oil that's boiled linseed oil it goes to the bottom and sits so this is a one to five mix so I've got uh, that's already diluted one part shellac so if you said um, 10 mil of shellac I would put 50 mil of denatured alcohol if it was and whatever container that it is whatever diameter so if you mix it in a bottle this is just a white spirits bottle so if I put 10 mil measured up there of shellac I would put 50 mil of denatured alcohol then I would put, uh, I've got the 50 mil of that, so then I would put uh, around a 10 mil there of oil, okay? That's what I find works for this. 
too much oil takes too long for that to and it'll keep going dull you have to keep waiting and going over it and over it because it'll go dull and all that is is the oil coming to the top and dry it's the oil taking its time to dry that's what it is um, but that's basically the mix the thing is with a lot of it when you do the shine juice and it's done in America you use the bullseye which is already diluted shellac it's already been diluted not diluted I should say dissolved it's been yeah. dissolved shellac is flakes and you have to dissolve it in alcohol the trouble is they don't tell you what they what percentage it's yeah. diluted it's like here we get rustings and it's French polish it's pure shellac it's just shellac flakes uh, dissolved in denatured alcohol but it doesn't tell you what it is it doesn't say what cut they've done because it's obviously made in big vats and done like that so if you put that in and then you put denatured alcohol in you're diluting it even more so you, that's awkward to work out i don't really know on that because i don't have it i use flakes okay and basically give it a really really good shake before you use it because the oil will always separate from the alcohol and the shellac the shellac won't come back to hard the shellac doesn't separate it's just the oil and it should be that creamy type color like that okay and that's what you get well I've got the same stuff just in this bottle which is an old mayonnaise bottle <laughs> because this one has just a little flip thing and I can pour it out from that but it's exactly the, the same okay if you don't use it very often then really go for a bottle like this because this is a spirit bottle and it seals airtight it, it it won't evaporate out of it otherwise it can evaporate in this if it's left for a time it will evaporate the alcohol will evaporate out it's not a problem just add more alcohol that's all there is to it right this I find I can use on things like this and I can do it at quite a high speed if I do it on bowls I've got to do it a lot slower you got to build up the coats you see me I used it on this one okay that still held its its shine yeah it's not lost any of its shine it's lovely all the way around even on the end grains it's still kept all its shine okay but it will go dull by 24 hours because the oil takes that time to dry all you do is give it another little buff and it comes up shiny but this you'll have to build coats up the trouble with that is there's always that chance where it's going to drag if you want a quick go on a bowl for bowls are quite like this this is a two to one mix okay so if you do it an ounce of shellac two ounces of alcohol that's it and then this has literally got a, a little drop i don't have a lot of this because i don't use this as much but this is a real thick gloopy mix a little bit of oil the oil helps you move it around it's, it's a basically if you know about french pot go and watch about french polishing you basically you have your shellac flakes denatured alcohol and then you pour a little bit onto your little cloth and you put a little bit of oil onto the wood and you use it to help the cloth to move the oil helps this to move to spread it without the oil as soon as you put it on it'll grit it'll go off and then it'll just drag too much shellac the same it can drag so if you got more shellac you need a little bit more oil but that's i've I'm up to sort of there about five mil of oil in this little tub and there's only a little bit in that so you can make that's quite a bit of oil okay but anyway that's roughly play about with it if you find you're putting it on and it's dragging you might want a little bit more oil you might want uh, less alcohol it could be the um, it's hard. play about with it try with more oil less alcohol uh, less shellac you might have too much shellac in there and it's drying out too quick but with this I've done that I'm not going to put any sealer on this I'm not going to use a sanding sealer I'm literally going to I've got a little I've put a little mark there I'm going to start it up just going to use a, a little bit of this uh, I'll my 180 grip I put a very slight mark on that when I held it <laughs> that's it no. that's all right right <laughs> so for me that is nice that's i'm not putting no sealer on it because this is a sealer anyway i'm just going to straight go on with the shellac let me get a clean bit of rag 
and the why I like this mix because on things like this if I just grab a couple of bits here these are just a couple of bits of paper that is a piece of U that is this mix put on straight onto the U at two and a half thousand RPM and that is the, the, the finish you get it gives no drag in it's a really nice finish that's the same with the pine okay that was just put straight on at two and a half thousand rpm so get that finish now if you have the thicker mix which the thick mix that i showed you this one okay if you want a really shiny finish it's that but to me that it looks and feels like plastic yeah okay nice yes really shiny stays well to me it looks like plastic same here that it looks like it's got a plastic coating over it I really don't like it I don't like that but the more shellac the thicker you mix with the shellac then the, the thicker the shine is going to be okay right so this is just turning two and a half thousand rpm so I'm going to put some of this on here and it's a very quick I'm just putting my hand there so it doesn't spray me all in the face didn't get me on that there we go and literally keep it moving really fast don't stand still and with this one being this this consistency I'll just keep building it up And I can put this on at this speed, see? And as long as I keep moving. Give it a few seconds, let it just dry off a little bit. You can see it's drying off. Don't change the cloth, don't use new bits of cloth. Still, like I said before, keep to the same bit because you'll find this goes slightly waxy, you know, it's the oil there. But what I find the good thing with this is this won't go dull after I leave it because I've already, got that speed that I'm turning, two and a half thousand RPM this is going on it, it's curing the oil. The oil is drying out really quick. So I can put quicker coats of this on. You just have to Put your hand there because you don't want a face full of it. Unless you don't know, you might want a face full of it. I don't know. <laughs> Put it on like that. And then we can stop it and have a look. And what you might find sometimes there'll be it looks like lime but it's not all it is is the if you look at it when you go like that it's the oil like i can move the oil it's the oil on it okay the oil is what comes up to the top just give it a little like this now if you use french polishing you would literally just keep going and going and going with it and building a shine up but because we've got the lathe we just start up and at that speed we just keep going until the oil's basically dried on it little bit of pressure you start to feel a little bit of heat that's perfect but don't press hard enough that you drag the shellac you don't want to put no drags in all we're doing is we're drying off the oil know where it's done because it, it basically just stops moving pretty much there like so and we get that lovely gloss finish now what I'm going to do is I'm going to part it off so I'm just going to use my 
carbide parking tool. Oh, put the face shield on first. You never know, it might fly up and hit me in the <laughs> face. Ready to touch it. <laughs> nice and gentle so it doesn't tear it off. Okay, I'm going to stand it upside down for a second. So I can pop this out of the way, get me sander and sand the bottom of it. Okay. Throw me tuck here on the floor oh, <laughs> just so that gets all the dust off of it. Right, for me sander, like I said, my sanding arbors, they fit inside pretty much any chuck you got, they fit inside it, just like so. And then, yeah, it's nice and clean. Come in and I'll just... Yep, that sits all right. That's going to sit all right. There we go. Stop that. Take that out. And then literally on that again give a quick shake up because it does separate and I can just put a little bit of the shellac on the bottom it will soak in at first but that's because it's going into the end grain but if you put a bit on it will seal it and then you can come back later and just put a little bit of uh, wax to buff it or whatever you want. There we go. Job done. And quick. Got a bit of dust inside <laughs> it from the thing like this. Oh. There we go. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of dust. <laughs> the dust had <laughs> stuck inside. Stuck inside it. But. There we go. Right, let me just get rid of that. You can put your little table. No, I'll just hold it. Okay. There we go. Get that. Got a bit of dust stuck to it there. <laughs> but there we go, and that's the shellac finish. And as you can see, it gives a. Keep it there. That's it. A beautiful finish all round. Okay. Yep. If you're not doing talking, you can get quite a lot of them done <laughs> through the course of the day. There we go. And the bottom, well, once that's dry, that shellac's soaked in, I'll get, put a little bit of wax on that, and that'll wax it off. But there we go, guys. So that's another one to go with those two. So just do all different sizes, okay? And that's it. Right, I hope that answered a few questions. We said that thank you, so thank you yeah. to everyone. Um, I hope it helped you out, Ian, and you're doing all right now. <laughs> I know we covered quite a lot in that one day, so I don't know if you remembered it all. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. And when you're doing your carbides, like I said, if you come in and, and do the cuts like that and cut the wood, don't scrape it. Carbide is no good for scraping, it really isn't. It will pull those fibres out, and once it pulls them out, it goes deep, and there you go. Okay. Right, to the pit, guys, and I'll see. Um, oh, I'll keep holding okay, one, that. Okay, one quick question, yeah, about comments. Yeah, I'll leave the comments on on this one. So if you have got any questions about the stuff, but if you're going to leave a comment saying moving me to rest and stuff, don't bother. And if you do bother, well, then I'm just going to block you and you won't be able to make comments on any of them. So that'd be good in a way because I'll just hide you from the channel. So there you go. Okay, I'm not interested. I move, What I do, I do because it's what I do. You do what you do, I'll do what I do. Okay, there we go. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Toodle pip. Bye, guys.